Gilthead bream fishing season here in Cornwall usually starts around April through to the end of October. But in the past, I've usually tried to catch them around June, July, August. But because they're su such a fantastic fish to fish for, and su such a fantastic fish to catch if you can catch one, because they can be at times a bit of a dedicated pursuit, this year, 2019, I decided to have more trips and start earlier. So it's very, very early May, and yesterday I went out on the kayak for my first trip of the year to see if I could catch one. But before we, we look at the, the rig that I was using, what I wanted to do was talk a, bit, a little bit about the bream. Now, when I did my previous gilt hair bream fishing video, which is about probably over four years ago now, a chap, a Greek chap, contacted me and he was in England. He was st studying at a university in England doing a PhD and he saw this video and he contacted me and he said, God, oh, he said, I didn't realise you got gilt head bream here in the UK. And he was fascinated by this, but also he was an extremely knowledgeable angler who had fished fish for gilt head bream for all, all of his life and built, built up a, a fantastic knowledge. Now, I'm very lucky that he wanted to share that knowledge with me and, and he sent me loads of information. He sent me information about all the different baits they fish, they use to fish for them down in the med, um, the different methods they use, the, the rigs they use, etc. But not just about the baits and the rigs. He also gave me a, a real insight to the fish itself. Um, it's breeding, it's breeding habits. And also the way it feeds. A lot, a, a, just, a, just a library of information, which I'm really grateful for. Now, one of the things I wanted to share with you from that information, and this is particularly for those of you that are fairly new to gilthead bream fishing, is the way that they feed, which to me is quite fascinating. Now, when gilhead bream come, in, come to a bait, often, although not always, but often they, they, don't come, they don't come straight in, suck it in, turn and swim away with it. They can actually mess around with that bait before they commit to picking it up crunching it up and then swimming away with it. So, for example, they'll, let's say they see uh, on a seabed there's a, a, a clam or, or, or whatever. They can just come in and look at it and then just circle, circle around it, looking at it, then, swim, then maybe swim away, then come back again, then they might go down and, and have a peck at it and then swim away come back again, maybe have another little peck of it, peck of it, peck at it, circle around. And this can, this can go on for, for ages. And, and this Greek chap told me this. He said, sometimes this messing around can go on for up to 20 minutes. But then what they do, they'll come in and, 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 and decide, right, I'm going to have that uh, and pick it up and eat and, uh, and take it. But not just the fact that they will mess around with a bait, it's the fact that uh, they, when they do commit to, to taking that bait, is how they actually, how they actually um, eat it. Now, a major part of their diet is shellfish. They will, of course, they take a marine worms and they will, they will eat, eat a bit of seaweed. But it's mainly shellfish. It could be mussels, uh, clams, uh, including, including razor clams. Uh, all, all different sorts of shellfish. So what they have is, and again, apparently, I'm told, it's built into their DNA. Because they're feeding on clams with a hard, with a hard shell, they've got, to, they've got to crunch it up, which explains why they've, when you, they've got that sort of row of, of, of teeth that go right back into the mouth that are very much like human teeth. Similar, similar to wrasse, which of course also will crunch up things like crabs and, and limpets. Similar to wrasse, but there's actually more of them really tough mouth. So say, for example, they're eating a cockle, which they definitely, 
definitely on their menu. Now, many, many gilt head bream that I've caught in the past that I've taken home to eat and I've opened them up, you can actually, the, the clam smell hits you. And when you're cleaning them, you, you just see loads of broken, broken clam shells. But of course, they've got to crush this up to get to the meat. So once they committed to take something, they'll come in and they have a, a crunch and spit method of eating. So they'll pick it up, crunch with that powerful mouth, then spit it out, crunch, spit, crunch, spit, until they've broken it, broken it all up where they can then take it in. And again, apparently, because they've got this built into their DNA, they will actually do the same if they're eating soft bait. So even if, if they're eating a worm, it's just built into them to crunch and then spit it out and crunch and spit it out. So this will explain from an angler's point of view, trying to catch them, why when you're fishing for gilt head bream, you've got to give them as least resistance as possible because if they feel that resistance, they can get spooked and then leave the bait and they won't they won't come back so so hence there's times and it's happened to me sometimes when you gilt head bream fishing you get just a just a light tap but no but no no real commitment and that could be where they're just coming in you got your bait down there they're just maybe having a peck at it and but not actually not actually committing to it and taking it so bearing that, what I've just passed that on, that information on to you, which I think, I think is absolutely fascinating, we're now going to look at the setup, and the setup is, is, is a setup that tries to make sure that if you do get a gilt head bream interested in your bait and he's messing around with it, it's the, as least resistance as possible. This is the rig and the rig you'll see me using later in the footage. And it is, of course, the running ledger, the flowing trace, which is probably the next best thing to actually freeline in a bait. So on my leader here, I've got a small boom, which is running free, then down to a swivel and then down to the trace. And in my case, it's three foot of 20 pound fluorocarbon. Now, going back to that Greek chap, he was talking, uh, saying about uh, the length of trace. And down there, depending on where they're fishing, they'll fish uh, traces of up to about 1.8 metres long. And again, that is to, that is to give the fish a chance uh, of picking up the bait or playing the bait by feeling the least resistance. So I would say if you, if you, if you can get away with a longer trace, then, then all the better. And then down to the hook... And in my case, later, uh, fishing razor clam as bait, small pieces of razor clam. I've got a size one, very sharp, very strong hook that will penetrate the, the tough mouth of the gilt head bream. It's a size one B, uh, Camazan B940S. But it will depend on the, on the size of the bait you're using. But I would say probably from size one uh, for the baits I use up to say 1.0 is, is usually suitable. Now the lead I'm using is just one ounce. And again, it's trying to fish in a way to offer the least resistance. Now I can get away with fishing with one ounce of lead and still be able to hold the bait on the bottom. But of course there are, will be occasions when you've got to fish heavier leads, maybe two ounces or, or three ounces of lead, or even you, maybe from the shore you're fishing in a place uh, where you've got to fish a grip lead. But that's fine because the main thing is you're fishing a flowing a flowing trace the idea being that the, the fish can play with the bait or it, it can pick up that bait and get it into its mouth before before it feels any resistance okay that's the rig now here's a reel that can also help when you gilt head bream fishing to uh, to offer that least resistance and it is a bait runner reel now, I invested in this last year. Uh, I need to get another one, really, if I want to fish two rods. But I got this one that uh, I can use from both the kayak and when, if I go shore fishing for gilt head bream. It's a Shimano bait runner. 
And in the past, I've, I've fished with ordinary reels, ordinary fixed ball reels. And later when you'll see the footage, because I've only got one of these, I'm fishing one rod with a bait runner and one rod with an ordinary reel. But what? But of course, the idea with the bait runner is that it's got a free spool. So you've got your drag, you preset your drag and then you cast your bait out and then you pop it in your rod holder or in your tripod and you pop it into free spool so the idea is is when your, your gilt head bream comes along and maybe it's playing with the bait or it's picked it up and it's swum away a little bit and it's doing that crunching mo motion before it actually really uh, takes it in and swims off of course it can do that because in free spool you can it can it can take the line. Now you've got to obviously have the tension of this so that when you're fishing in the tide it, it, it doesn't, uh, the strength of the tide doesn't, doesn't start taking the line and of course people who have got bait runners of you will know this, you've got this tensioner on here where you can tighten up and it will tighten up that, that free spool. So yeah I mean it's, uh, it's absolutely brilliant and really recommended for gilt head bream fishing, it's the perfect reel for that situation where you've got a, uh, a fish that you need to give a lot of time. And the idea, of course, is, and again, you'll see it later, the fish is committed, it's swimming off with it, it's run, it does its run, it's taking line, and then, of course, all you need to do is turn the handle of the, turn the, handle of, the uh, of the reel like that, and the spool engages and then you're back on back on the normal drag. All right, so that's just a little insight into the, the fish itself and the rig that I'm using and one of the reels that I'm using and the reason why. Now, one thing I forgot to mention when I was talking about the way gilt head bream feed, there is a video out on, on YouTube. And in fact, I think there's two, but there's definitely one. Hopefully I'll be able to find it if any of you are interested, where someone drops a razor clam they just drop a razor clam down onto the seabed and the gilt head bream come along and they see this razor clam and they do exactly what I'd explained. Mess around with it, swim around with it, look at it. And, and so if anyone's interested in that, let me know and hopefully I can find the link and uh, I'll, let, I'll let you have it. I'll let you have it in the comments. Right, to the fishing. Now, in this video, most of the footage I've had to narrate. The reason I've, I've done had to do that is because I had a bit of, a bit of a wind noise problem, so um, I decided to I decided to, to narrate most of the footage. Okay, so I've dropped the anchor and I'm just getting the rods ready. It's about seven in the morning and four hours before low water. The plan was to fish down to low water and then the first two hours of the flood tide. As regards daytime fishing, I've only ever caught gilt head bream from dawn up to about 1pm. I'm yet to catch on an afternoon tide despite trying many times. The only other time is at night. Just getting the bait ready here and what I like to do first is bind a piece of clam of about an inch and a half long with bait elastic to make a sausage. Then thread the clam on the hook just like a worm finally securing with a bit more elastic. Depending on the time of the tide, the depth of water I'm anchored in is only about 10 to 15 feet. So rather than just lower the bait down, I like to cast it away from the kayak. This keeps it away from the kayak and any noise that I might make. Just brought the bait in here to check it and it's virtually all gone to the crabs but just a matter of checking it regularly and rebait up. But the good news is it didn't happen too often because you know what they say, when the crabs are around and your bait's going to the crabs, there's usually no fish around. The other slight problem was a lot of muck and loose weed in the water, which you can see running alongside the kayak. Fortunately, not too many bits catching the line, which can be a real pain if that does happen. There was no sign of any fish where I was fishing, so I had a short move, but also to try and get some shelter from the wind. You can see what an awkward angle the kayak is sitting, 
and where the lines are running. This is caused by a wind against tide situation. The tide is running from my right to my left, but the wind is running from my left to my right. When the wind drops, the kayak will turn with the tide and it's comfortable. But when the wind picks up and is stronger, you get this awkward angle. A small drogue at the bow with the anchor at the stern can help to point the kayak with the tide. But I knew once the tide turns, I would have both in the same direction and no problems. And you will see that later. In a moment, you'll see the first bite and I'll let it play live. The bait runner really worked well here. Just before I managed to turn the main camera to the left of me on, I had the bite and the fish ran with the bait. And then there was a pause. The footage starts during the pause. I mean, I'm not sure, it might not be a, a gilt head, it could be a bass. Now, it's just before low water, I had, I had absolutely nothing on the, on the um, ebb tide, most of the ebb tide. And I've had a little move. It is a gilt head. Brilliant. Not a big one, but The next fish is not a bream but a small bass, but it shows the bait runner working and why a bait runner is so useful for gilt head bream fishing. And I do need to get another one when, when fishing two rods. Well, only a small fish there, but I can tell you, whenever you go gilt hair bream fishing, or at least whenever I go gilt hair bream fishing, I'm catching, uh, I'm, I'm really grateful of, of just catching one, regardless of size, because it can be a dedicated pursuit. You, you can go trip after trip after trip after trip, putting the hours in, putting the dedication in, getting up at the crack of the dawn and maybe I won't get, get any. And then you might you might go for a, another trip and, you, and you'll get a few. That that's that's the way it is. 
So really grateful, particularly as this was my first trip of the year, could so easily have been a blank. So I'm very, very grateful to catch that fish. So once again, I hope you found that useful and many, many thanks for watching.